Hello and welcome to part two of learning PowerShell desired state configuration. In this module, we are going to walk you through about local configuration manager. So let's take a look at the agenda. So we'll discuss what is LCM. We'll understand the LCM properties. We'll also figure out how to write LCM configurations in order to modify these LCM properties. So let's get started understanding the local configuration manager. So what is LCM? So the LCM is the engine of the desired state configuration, meaning this is the agent which is sitting on every node and it is responsible for understanding the configurations that you send and implementing the configurations to you send that to that node, right? And it is also responsible for a number of other things in DSC, like determining the refresh mode, like whether you are in a push mode or in a pull mode, specifying how often a node will pull and implement the configuration and associating the node with the pull service and specifying partial configurations and etc. So in order to modify these LCM properties, I mean, there are a set of LCM properties you can play with. So if you want to really modify any of these properties for some reason, you need to write a configuration in order to modify the LCM properties. But we will take a look at how to write that and what the LCM properties looks like in a couple of seconds. So let's take an example of the entire flow. As you can see, as an administrator, I'm sitting at a laptop and I want to change or implement some configuration on this specific node, right? And you can see that the LCM is already installed on that machine, right? Because that is part of the operating system. The agent comes out of the box with the operating system, so you don't need to do any additional configuration. So now, as soon as I have created a configuration, I'm going to push that configuration to that node and the LCM agent will receive that configuration and it will apply that configuration onto the target node. So this is how the entire flow of applying a configuration actually works using an LCM agent. So now there are certain properties that you can actually define for this agent, right? So let's take a look. Uh, what are the default properties which are available in the first place? So if you open PowerShell and run get DSC local configuration manager, you can see the agent settings as you can see action after reboot, agent ID and so on and so forth. So these are all the settings for the agent which defines the behavior of the specific LCM on that node, right? For example, if you say refresh frequency minutes is 30, which means every 30 minutes it's going to check for new configuration, right? And then, you know, configuration mode frequency in 15 minutes, which means every 15 minutes, if there is any configuration drift, it's going to reapply that configuration. Similarly, there are certain set of other properties as well. So I have given you the link right at the bottom here, which you can actually use in order to understand what every specific property means to you. So let's go through some of the documentation that Microsoft has for this uh, LCM configuration. If you take a look at this website, uh, so action after reboot. So it specifies what happens after a reboot during applying the configuration, the possible values are configure, continue configuration and stop configuration. Meaning, let's say a node is applying a configuration and in the middle, it may require some kind of a restart, right? It need to reboot the machine to proceed further. So in order to implement that configuration, the node gets rebooted and right after the node comes online after the reboot, what, sh what should the agent do? The agent should proceed with the rest of the configuration or it should stop there, right? So that's what this action after reboot property actually defines. So if you set to continue configuration, as soon as the machine comes online, it continue with the rest of the configuration. But if you set to stop configuration, the machine will not proceed with the rest of the configuration after the reboot. So which is very important to understand. So there are other things like allow module override, which is set to a Boolean value true or false, meaning if a new configuration is downloaded from the service, uh, are allowed to override the old ones, right? If you are actually having multiple overlapping modules, and if you want to have them side by side or not, right? Version one, version 1.2 of same specific module, for example, right? If you want to have them side by side, 
right? Uh, you will set this value to uh, false. If you want to override as soon as you have a new version of a module, then you will set this value to true, right? So there are descriptions for every individual property as we can see here. You can go through this documentation from docs.microsoft.com, which gives you a very clear understanding of every single property. Now, this properties can be changed, right? Based on your specific requirements and based on how you want to actually, uh, you know, configure your target LCM node, you can tweak these properties. Let's say if I want to set the configuration mode frequency minutes to 30 minutes instead of 50, yeah, that is absolutely possible. But this is not something that you rightly can change, right? You need to uh, write a configuration script, right? In order to modify these properties. In the previous section, I have shown you how to write a node configuration strip, uh, script in order to uh, more, uh, push a deployment, right? We have installed Telnet and so on and so forth. If you haven't watched my previous video, just go back to my previous video, part one, and understand the configuration deployment for a node. And then if you come back here, it will all make sense, right? So these properties are definitely editable, but yeah, you need to write a configuration script for that. So if you have watched my previous video, you know what is a configuration script. So a basic configuration script uh, would look something like this, but you know this is very specifically for modifying the LCM properties. So we you will use this uh, DSC local configuration manager uh, meta tag in order to help understand PowerShell that you are creating a configuration in order to modify the LCM properties. Okay, so let's take a look at the node configuration versus the LCM configuration. So on the left hand side, you can look at the node configuration. So this node configuration is actually installing some features like IIS, right, and ASP, and then uh, it also ensuring that we have all the prerequisites installed for IIS. So that is what this configuration is actually doing. So it is doing the technical implementation on the server, right? Installing the IIS role, configuring the ASP.NET and so on and so forth. But on the right hand side, if you take a look at this configuration, this configuration is especially uh, for modifying the properties of LCM, right? Modifying the properties of LCM. Let's say you want to modify the, you know, uh, the configuration mode frequency from 15 to 30. And if you want to change this refresh frequency from, from 30 to 60 or something, you cannot directly do that. You need to write a configuration script like this, right, in order to modify that specific properties. So I will walk you through, right, uh, this LCM configuration. So for majority of the part, the LCM configuration looks very, very same as a node configuration. But the only difference you can observe here is this meta tag, which is nothing but the DSC local configuration manager tag, which is used to indicate or which is used to tell PowerShell that this is a meta configuration, right? A meta configuration is nothing but a configuration that I am writing to modify the LCM properties, LCM properties. Like our node configuration, our configuration starts with the keyword configuration and you can give some kind of a name to your configuration. Every configuration will have a name, right? And then you can specify the node on which you want to configure the settings. And I said node is local host. And then you can specify the list of settings you want to modify. For example, here action after reboot is set to continue configuration. But if I want to change it to stop, right stop configuration or something yeah i can assign that value here allow module override is set to true but if i want to change that to false yeah i can do that and so on and so forth so once you write this configuration you will apply this configuration to the lcm so that it will modify the properties of that local configuration manager on that node so let's go to my lab environment and see what my existing lcm state is and then we will see how it actually can uh, you know uh, help you to write a script and modify the LCM properties. So I'm just trying to reconnect to my lab. So just give me a second here.
All right, we are in my lab environment. I have launched PowerShell and I'm going to run a command called get DSE for desired state configuration and local configuration manager. So as soon as I run this command, you can take a look at certain set of properties being displayed for the agent. OK, this is my existing configuration of my node LCM. As you can see, action after reboot was set to continue configuration and then configuration mode was set to apply and monitor and then configuration mode frequency was set to 15 and so on and so forth. Let's say if I want to modify any of the properties for my nodes LCM, so I need to write a local configuration manager, right? Local configuration manager configuration. As you can see, this is how it looks like. As I'm saying, DSC local configuration manager. So this will tell PowerShell that I'm writing a script, okay, to modify the LCM properties. And similarly, the keyword starts with configuration, right? All the configuration script starts with this keyword and you will give a random name, any name that you would like to give. And I have given set push mode here. Node is nothing but the local computer, right? This is the local machine on which I want to configure. If you want to give any other machine, you can just give the name of the computer, right? The fully qualified domain name or NetBIOS name of that machine. So now my current configuration says uh, configuration mode is apply and monitor. So let's say I want to change that. So I'm just now changing that value to apply and autocorrect. And uh, as you can see, allow module override is set to false as of now in my current configuration, but I want to change that to true. OK, so whatever the properties that you want to actually modify, you are going to list all those properties here and the respective values inside your configuration script. That's it. Very, very straightforward, right? So not a complicated stuff at all. As you can see, I want to change this uh, configuration mode. So I said configuration mode is apply and autocorrect and so on and so forth. Let's say if you don't if you don't if you don't want to modify something, then you can definitely uh, you know uh, do not mention that. What I mean by that is let's say I want to leave refresh frequency minute to 30. So I did not mention that. Uh, so I can just delete this, right? So I don't need to mention refresh frequency minutes is 30 because that is already set to 30. So you will mention something in the configuration script only when you want to modify that property. If you don't want to modify that property, you don't need to actually uh, mention that property in the script because, you know, as soon as I push this particular configuration script, these settings will merge with the existing one, meaning if you don't mention something, it will stay as it is. But if you change, if you mention something, right, if you change, if you mention something which is completely different from what existingly it is, so it will get modified, right? So currently my configuration mode frequency is set to 15. So I'm going to change that to 30. And also my status retention interval time in days is set to 10, but I want to change that to 7. So I mentioned that inside my configuration script. And also reboot if needed is set to false, which I want to change to true and refresh mode is already set to push. So I don't need to really mention refresh mode here because that is already set to push, right? So now we are ready with our first configuration. So the first thing that I will do is I will load the configuration into the brain of PowerShell. And then I'm going to call that configuration by its name, right? So it's like a function, right? If you want to execute a function, how do you call the function by its name? Similarly, if you want to execute the configuration, you will call the configuration by its name, which is nothing but set push mode. So now this is going to generate something called as meta.mof, meta.mof. So previously you might have seen in the video, the last video, when I wrote a node configuration, right? You got a mof file which is node.mof, which is nothing but the node name.mof, right? Whether it is DC or whatever the computer name, you will get the mof file as computer name.mof, right? Computer name.mof file. But when you write a configuration manager script, right, to modify the DSC LCM properties, you will generate something called as meta.mof. Meta.mof is nothing but the meta configuration of the LCM properties, right? So there are three MOFs that you always deal with in DSC. The first one is the node.mof file. Okay. This MOF file is for enacting the right, node.mof file. 
This MOF file is for the technical configuration, whether you want to install IIS or whether you want to install, uh, you know, Hyper-V or whatever it might be, right? This is the doing the technical part. The next thing is the meta.mof. So this meta.mof is for the actual uh, LCM configuration modification. LCM config modification, okay? And the other type of MOF you will see is the schema.MOF. Schema.MOF is something that you will see at a later stage uh, when you actually write your own set of uh, uh, configurations, right? Like custom configurations. Then you will see something called as uh, schema.MOF. But this is too early to discuss about schema.MOF at this stage. So we will talk about schema.MOF at a later uh, stage of this series. But for now, as you can see, we have the local configuration uh, meta.mof actually generated. So the next thing that I want to do is I need to run that particular configuration so that the LCM on this machine will receive and implement that particular configuration on this node. So as soon as I run this, something happened in the background, but it is always good to use the dash verbo switch, right, in order to you know, uh, get the verbose stream, right, of the implementation so that you get a basic understanding of what exactly is happening behind the scenes. So as you can see, as soon as I use the verbose switch, I got some information about what the LCM is doing. So as you can see, an LCM call has arrived for this computer and it is checking for the resources and it is implementing that resources. We will go into this into much more deeper at a later stage, but for now, Let's go ahead and take a look at the properties one more time. So now, as you can see, right, the configuration mode was changed from apply and monitor to apply and autocorrect. Previously, it was apply and monitor. Now, after the implementation of my configuration file, it changed to apply and autocorrect. Similarly, uh, as you can see, the status resumption time is set to 10 days. But in my case, now it is changed to seven days because in my configuration script, I set the status retention time should be seven days, right? So this is how you modify the LCM properties, right? And we will discuss much more deeper about troubleshooting the LCM and so on and so forth in the upcoming series. But for now, in this module, we have discussed about what is LCM, right? And what is the responsibility of LCM? This derive the properties of the local configuration manager and how to write configurations to modify the properties of the local configuration monitor. That's it for this video. So please do like and share and subscribe if you want more content from me. Thank you and have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.